Hello everyone. In this class, we will learn about cerebellum. The anatomical divisions of cerebellum. The cerebellum is divided into three parts by two transverse fissures. The posterior lateral fissure separates the medial nodulus and the lateral flocculus on either side from the rest of the cerebellum. The primary fissures divides the remainder into an anterior and posterior lobe. Functional divisions of cerebellum. Functionally, the divisions that is lobes are named according to the connections they make with uh, other components of the motor control system. Flocular nodular lobe. It is functionally related to the vestibular apparatus and therefore it is called as vestibular cerebellum. It is concerned with control of body posture. Spinocerebellum. The entire anterior lobe and part of posterior lobe that receive information from the spinal cord are called spinocerebellum. It occupies the median portion of the cerebellar cortex and receives proper receptive input from the body and it is concerned with the control of axial that is trunk and limb muscles and they are involved in postural reflexes. Neocerebellum, the remaining part of the posterior lobe that is lateral portions of the cerebral hemisphere forms the neocerebellum and it receives information from cerebral cortex and pons and it is concerned with skilled voluntary movements and it is also called as cerebrocerebellum. So this diagram showing three functional divisions that is vestibular cerebellum, spinocerebellum and cerebro, uh, cerebrocerebellum. The spinocerebellum is involved in the motor execution whereas the cerebrocerebellum is involved in the motor planning and vestibular cere cerebellum it is involved in the balance and the eye movements. On each side of the cerebellum uh, is connected to brainstem by three peduncles. Superior cerebellar peduncle, it connects the midbrain to the cerebellum. Middle cerebellar peduncle connects pons to the cerebellum. And inferior peduncle, cerebellar peduncle connects medulla to the cerebellum. Organization of the cerebellum. The cerebellum has external cerebellar cortex separated by white matter from the deep cerebellar nuclei. The primary afferent inputs that is mossy fibers and climbing fibers are uh, they, they send collaterals to the deep nuclei and pass to the cortex. There are four deep nuclei that is dentate, globose, emboliform and fastigial nucleus. See the cerebral cortex microscopically, the gray matter of the cerebellar cortex consists of five main types of neurons, stellate cells, basket cells, Purkinje cells, granule cells and Golgi cells. Purkinje cells are one of the largest neuron in the body. These five types of neurons are arranged in three layers, molecular layer, Purkinje cell layer and granule cell layer. Molecular layer, this layer is a most superficial and is composed of two types of neurons, stellate cells and basket cells and unmyelinated nerve fibers. Whereas Purkinje cells, it is composed of single layer of large flask shaped Purkinje cells and dendrites of Purkinje cell. Whereas granule cell uh, layer consists of granule and Golgi cells with their processes and sensory mossy fibers with their synaptic glomeruli. Neuronal circuits and neuronal activity in the cerebellum. Cerebellum executes its function through excitatory output from deep cerebellar nuclei to the brainstem and thalamus. Neural connection within the cerebellar cortex is basically concerned with modulating or timing the excitatory output of the deep cerebellar nuclei via the fibers of Purkinje cells. And this is done in accordance with signals received by the cerebellar cortex from different parts of the brain and body. Neuronal activity in the cerebellum involves three processes. It depends on three processes that is afferents to cerebellar cortex, neuronal activity in the intrinsic cerebellar circuitry, neuronal activity in the deep cerebellar nuclei. Afferents to cerebellar cortex. The afferents to cerebellar cortex reach uh, via two types of fibers that is climbing fibers and mossy fibers. Climbing fibers. These fibers represent terminations of axons reaching the cerebellum from the inferior olivary nucleus. The climbing fibers excite Purkinje cells 
and deep cerebellar nuclei whereas mossy fibers all the afferent fibers of the cerebellum other than the olivo cerebellar are called as mossy fibers the mossy fibers excite purkinje cells granule cells and deep cerebellar nuclei neuronal uh, activity of the intrinsic cerebellar circuitry as a results of excitatory input from climbing fibers or mossy fibers the following activity is set up in the intrinsic cerebellar circuitry that is there can be feed forward inhibition of purkinje cells there can be feed forward inhibition of granule cells there can be feed back inhibition of granule cells which are going to ma- modulate the the activity in the purkinje cell neuronal activity in the deep cerebellar nuclei the deep cerebellar nuclei receive excitatory inputs via collateral from mossy fibers climbing fibers and also other excitatory inputs the neuronal activity in the cerebellar cortex plays an important role in modulating the excitatory signals of the pathways from deep cerebellar nuclei to thalamus cerebral cortex and to brain stem nuclei because of this modulation or modulating or timing effect the cerebellar cortex is able to well organize and coordinate the different movements of the body this diagram shows uh, the internal interneural connections you can see the mossy fibers and uh, the climbing fibers they are the afferents and they are excitatory to the deep cerebellar nuclei as well as granule cells mossy fibers whereas climbing fibers they are excitatory to deep cerebellar nuclei and purkinje cells the activated granule cells through the parallel fibers they are going to uh, activate the basket cells which in turn inhibits the activity in the purkinje cells and which is called as uh, feed forward inhibition so similarly excited granule cell uh, they are going to stimulate the golgi cells and uh, golgi cells in turn they are going to stimulate other granules inhibit other granule cells it is also type of pause i mean uh, uh, feedback feed forward inhibition whereas if the golgi cell it is going to inhibit the same granule cell it is called as uh, uh, forward uh, inhibition feed forward inhibition ultimately the activities in the uh, neurons in the cerebellar cortex obviously through the purkinje cells they modulate the uh, modulate the activity of the deep cerebellar nuclei which is uh, at the end ultimately it is uh, uh, excitatory connections of cerebellum afferent connections tracks through superior cerebellar peduncle they are vestibular ventral spino cerebellar tract it carries large portion of extra septive that is cutaneous and proprioceptive fibers from all the parts of the body the fibers enter cerebellum via ipsilateral superior cerebellar peduncle and it is distributed mainly to the vermis and anterior lobe tecto cerebellar tracts they arises from the superior and inferior colliculi which relays fibers respectively from the eye and ear this tract carries visual impulses from superior colliculus and auditory impulses from inferior colliculus to spino cerebellum through the superior cerebellar peduncle rubro spinal tract rubro rather rubro cerebellar tracts they arises from the red nucleus may be uh, both crossed and uncrossed uh, they en- they enter via superior cerebellar peduncle and it is distributed mainly to the dentate nucleus it transmits impulses which have originated from motor cortex and relays in the red nucleus olivo cerebellar tracts these this tracts this tract is formed by the climbing fibers arising from the inferior olivary nucleus in medulla after taking origin these fibers cross the midline and reach the spino cerebellum through the superior cerebellar peduncle of the opposite side it carries proper receptive inputs from whole body via uh, relay in inferior olive 
the inferior olivary nucleus receives afferent from three sources that is brain stem nuclei of the same side spinal cord through spino olivary tract same side and cerebral cortex of opposite side tracks through the middle cerebellar peduncle cortico ponto cerebellar tract it arises in the motor cortex that is area 4 and 6 and other part of the cerebral cortex it ends in the nuclei pontis from the nuclei pontis the ponto cerebellar fibers cross to enter the opposite side uh, in middle cerebellar peduncle and are distributed to all parts of the cerebral cortex except for the flocculo nodular lobe tracks through inferior cerebellar peduncle the dorsal spinal cerebellar tract it carries mainly extraceptive that is cutaneous and uh, proprioceptive impulses from trunk and leg it is uncrossed tract and reaches the spinal cerebellum through the inferior peduncle of the same side it is distributed to the anterior lobe pyramus uvula and the median part of the paramedian lobe the vestibular vestibular cerebellar tract it arises in the vestibular nuclei it passes through the inferior cerebellar peduncle of the same side and reaches the deep cerebellar nuclei it supplies mainly the flocculo nodular and uvula cuneo cerebellar tract it arises from the external arcuate fibers it reaches the spinal cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle of the same side to the anterior lobe pyramus and uvula it carries proprioceptive impulses from arm and neck muscles to the spinal cerebellum reticular cerebellar tracts it arises in the lateral reticular nucleus and is uncrossed it is distributed via the inferior cerebellar peduncle of the same side to the whole cerebellar cortex we see the efferent connections purkinje cell axons pass to the deep cerebellar nuclei in orderly manner their influence on these nuclei is purely inhibitor via the release of gaba coming to the functions of cerebellum the cerebellum controls the motor activities of both voluntary via pyramidal system as well as non voluntary like tone posture and equilibrium that is via extra pyramidal system control of body posture and equilibrium the flocculo nodular lobe that is vestibular cerebellum is concerned with the control of body posture and equilibrium afferents from vestibular apparatus pass directly or after a relay in the vestibular nuclei to the flocculo nodular lobe the afferents from them return back to the vestibular nuclei from these nuclei the vestibular spinal tract connects with the spinal motor neurons control of muscle tone and stretch reflexes spinal cerebellum regulates the postural reflexes by modifying the muscle tone it facilitates gamma motor neurons in the spinal cord the gamma motor neurons reflexly modify the activity of the motor neurons and thus regulate the muscle tone thus cerebellum forms an important site of linkage of alpha gamma system responsible for muscle tone control of voluntary movements cerebellum is not able to initiate any motor activity but coordinates the movements initiated by motor cortex coordination of the movements is the result of appropriate regulation of time rate range force and direction of the muscular activity this is made possible because the cerebellum establishes the reciprocal connections with the most regions of central nervous system uh, to which it is connected control of eyeball movements the oculomotor trochlear abducens nuclei which supply the extraocular muscles of eye movements are brought under the cerebellar control by vestibular nuclei pyramus is concerned with the movement of eyeball because its stimulation causes upward eye movement to ipsilateral side it ha- also has a role in the judgment of distance cerebellar lesions the cerebellar lesion of one of the hemisphere produces dysfunction on the same side of the body whereas lesion of the vermis affects both the sides due to the double crossing that is each cerebellar hemisphere influences the opposite cortex which in turn influences the motor cortex via corticospinal tract which controls the movement of opposite side of the body 
Because of the double decussation, each cerebellar hemisphere controls the voluntary movements on its own uh, side of the body. Some of the characteristic features of cerebellar lesion. There will be disturbance in the posture. There can be atonia or hypotonia. The muscle tone is either completely lost, which is called as atonia, or markedly uh, decreased, which is called as hypotonia, on the affected side due to the loss of facilitatory effect of the neocerebellar. Therefore, the muscles feel soft and the limb moves to and fro slowly. Attitude. The trunk is bent with concavity towards affected side. This is because the weight of the body is thrown on unaffected leg. Face is rotated towards the opposite side which is pulled by healthy muscles. The homolateral shoulder is lower than the opposite normal shoulder. The leg is abducted and rotated outwards. Spontaneous deviation. If the eyes are closed and arms are held straight out in front of the body, the homolateral arms bend laterally. Then there can be nystagmus. It is a tremor of eyeballs which occurs when patient attempts to fix his eyes on an object. It consists of a slow and uh, it, it consists of a slow to and fro movement. And uh, on looking to the affected side due to the hypotonia and uh, rapid to and fro movement on looking to opposite side. Then deep tendon reflexes. Deep reflexes become weak and pendular. For example, pendular knee jerk. That is after the initial reflex response, the leg on leg on falling continues to swing freely to and fro. And this is due to the hypotonia of quadriceps muscle. Disturbance of the voluntary movements. So there can be ataxia. It is a lack of coordination of the movements due to the errors in the rate, range, force and direction of movements. It is a hallmark of cerebellar disorder and it is characterized by decomposition of the movements. That is, the movement seems to occur in stages. The patient cannot easily combine the movements of uh, several joints into single smooth coordinated motion. For example, to move arm, they might first move the shoulder and then elbow, then finally the wrist. There can be earth synergy. There is a lack of incoordination. That is lack of coordination between protagonist and antagonist and synergies. There can be dysmetria. It is the movement. Uh, the movement uh, is poorly carried out in direction, range, force, and therefore the movements overshoot uh, in their intended mark. That is uh, the pass pointing. That is hypermetria. Uh, or fall short, which is called as hypometria. It results from the loss of the neural circuit required to control the duration and strength of the movement. There can be intentional tremor. It is a common and remarkable feature of cerebellar lesion. Such patients cannot perform movements smoothly. If they reach for an object, their movements are jerky and accompanied by oscillating to and fro tremors that become more marked as hand approaches the object. The tremor are coarse and they occur at the frequency of 4 to 6 hertz per second. 4 to 6 oscillations per second. Sorry. Clinically, these disturbances can be demonstrated by finger nose test, ribbon phenomenon, erdicokinesis and heel knee test. Gait. Patients walk in a clumsy manner with their feet wide apart, which is also called as wide-based gait. They have such difficulty uh, in maintaining balance and their gait appears drunken, called drunken gait. The patient walks in a zigzag line and deviates to the affected side due to the hypotonia. Speech is slurred, scanning type, and it is also slow and uh, lalling like a baby due to the imperfect use of the movements of the laryngeal muscles and tongue. So this is in brief about cerebellum, their connections and uh, some of the characteristic features of cerebellar lesion. Thank you.